Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. Uh, this is our Bucky Inspired Comprehensivity series to understand and change the world. I am delighted to have Tom Miller here. No, I'm delighted to be here with Tom Miller at his studio and apartment. And Tom, um, CJ recommended that I reach out to Tom. Um, because he said he has the best understanding and does the best presentation of Bucky's geometry that uh, he has seen. And he suggested that I should just go to Tom's studio and talk to him. That would be the best way for Tom to actually show what, um, you know, show his work. So uh, Tom... I'm just grateful that you agreed to do this. Thank well, you so thank much. Thank you very much. Welcome to my home. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to, uh, the format for today's meeting is that I'm going to have this extended conversation with Tom because he's been working on these ideas for about 50 years. And what we're going to do is um, after the presentation. He's actually going to show us many things. He's also going to show us this apartment. This is the most efficient apartment I have seen in New York. Okay, I've been to many apartments in New York. This is the most efficient apartment I've seen. Efficient use of space. I did not know this could be done. So much could be done with so little space. So we're going to see a little bit of that. And after we are done, I'm going to invite people to ask questions. Please focus your questions on trying to understand the, his work. So, um, you know, you can go ahead and send in the questions. Becky, who is helping me, uh, she has done most of the setup here. She's done such a magnificent job. She's going to take all the questions and she's going to pose them in the order of the questions that actually help Tom elucidate his ideas will come first. And then after we're done with uh, questions, then I'm going to open it up for people to talk about what they got from this experience. All right, so that's the plan. So let me get started. So Tom, how did you get started on Bucky? Well, it started before Bucky. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, almost 50 years ago in, in 1973, I moved to this town north of Seattle and bought this abandoned house and started apprenticing with a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And I used to walk in the, there was a um, tree farm that was bordered my land. And I would walk through this forest to sort of unwind. And, you know, I was a young man and I was trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I found great solace walking through the forest. And it had been clear cut maybe 20 years before, but there were these gigantic, piles of what they considered scrap trees. Mm -hmm. And one day I was climbing up this pile and I stepped on this one log and it was at the perfect fulcrum and lever to lift up half of this pile of wood that was <laughs> thousands of pounds. And I had this, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, it's still to my day today is I can remember it. It was like the forest was illuminated and I felt connected to every pattern that was there. I was much a part of the pattern as any fern or the tree. And I immediately saw what I needed to do with my life, which was to develop my ability to see patterns, which I think is really what my talent is, is that I can look at a geometrical system, uh, polyhedra, and find patterns in them that other people don't see. And then to start building living spaces that incorporated these sort of natural uh, principles that I felt so intensely. So the next day I went to the major city to find the book that you know explained to builders how to use this and I didn't find that. And actually the website is that response. But maybe a year later, I was looking through the Whole Earth catalog and it mentioned Buckminster Fuller. 
And I said, oh my God, this was it. And so I immediately got Synergetics and Synergetics 2. I mean, his writing is very dense. But, you know, for me, you know, this was what, you know, he was talking about exactly what I wanted. And his motto, dare to be naive. Oh, my God. I thought, you know, in such a cynical world, you know, I had withdrawn. I was living like a hermit because there was just too much corruption, you know, and when you're 20, mm -hmm. you know, you just think everything is too corrupt. Um, but dare to be naive, you know, facing the truth of what's around you and the indifference and the cynicism to believe in yourself that you have some capacity to change things. I thought that that was, wow, that empowered me to go through years and years and years of obscurity of dead ends of trying this and that not work and oh well that worked but that's not quite what i want you know wow. so that's how i discovered bucky wow and can in brief can you tell me what you've done since and then we will go into the main part well so i was living as a hippie north of seattle and in for in 1978, I moved to New York mm -hmm. and started working as a carpenter. I did mostly display, display carpentry where I worked for sheet and towel companies, but I, did, I had to supplement it. So I started designing spaces to cram a thousand uses into a very small space. New York is the ideal place to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I always got work. Mm -hmm. And um, so then, you know, people, if they hire you, they're not going to want the artistic side of you. Because on the website, you if you looked at my early work, I tried to incorporate the geometrical systems with sort of my artistic expression. And very few people wanted that. Mm -hmm. So I just kept working with the ideas. And then um, my mother's um, house was damaged by Hurricane Andrew and my brother and I went down there to help her. And then I realized when I saw all the destruction that I should design what is the minimum space that you can a person can live in and design some kind of modular system. So I came up with these four closets with a dome on top. And at the same time, I've been going back and forth to Brazil and I decided that I would try to build a house using these ideas. Well, the long story short, that you really need to have an architect and an engineer when you build a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did it all on my own. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had all sorts of problems later on. But then, you know, going back and forth between Brazil and here, doing work here in small spaces and building on the house there. And, uh, you know, I, and, started collaborating with a Brazilian architect, Fabiano Schwabi, who's an amazing individual. And he started digitalizing all of my models so that I could have a digital version of everything that I'd been building. Mm -hmm. And he became, then would start incorporating that into architectural um, ideas. And so right now we're trying to come up with what is a, small house that we can use for other people to who have the materials the new materials that are being built the that um, have the capacity to actually build it because neither one of us have that capacity with two main emphases of the modularity is one is that people don't use reflected light that that if you have a way in which light strikes a surface, goes through a window, and then is reflected onto a dome-like ceiling, then all day long you can have sunlight and it's this soft ambient light wow. without having to have any. And so the great thing about, if you'll see all of these over mm -hmm. here, that they're, the whole idea is to use basic geometrical systems as these dome-like, you know, cut them in half, do their equators, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and do you know that they have all these spaces for uh, solar panels, mm -hmm. not just one plane here. The whole thing about modular building has been rectilinear way too long. Nature does not build in rectangles. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to what the bee says. <laughs> the hexagon <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, um, so folks, um, when I started talking to Tom, he said, I'm, you know, I'm developing a website and I'll give you access to it. You know, it's been, it's not been published yet. Um, and I looked at it and it's the most incredible website because it actually does a beautiful job of telling the entire story of not just Tom's journey, but what you can do with modular design using natural forms. So uh, there are two ways we can proceed. Do you want to demonstrate that first with your hands? Uh, or would you prefer to that we go through the portals one by one or well, a combination of those? What well, why like? don't we start since we have these models here. Yes. Um, these are the things that I'm working on right now that the hexagonal prism is a wonderful mm -hmm. first floor because mm -hmm. you need like a modular wall mm -hmm. and you need some kind of modular system that fits together because mm -hmm. the way that hexagons fit together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can have courtyards, mm -hmm. you can have light wells. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I've just been trying to come up with ways in which to reflect light. You know, the that was off of a dodecahedron. Then this is off of the uh, Icosi dodecahedron. And, you know, it's just playing around with ideas. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so uh, are any of these the ones at the back? Are these the ones that can be taken apart and put back together? Are those the, the modular ones? This one is because before when I would try to do my work, mm -hmm. it would collapse under the weight of too much information. Mm -hmm. So I decided that this time I would limit it to the five platonic solids. Okay. The icosahedron, the dodecahedron, the cube, the tetrahedron and the octahedron. And there are several ways that I demonstrate the synergy has always been kind of abstract. Mm -hmm. You know, you say it's the behavior of whole systems unpredicted by the behavior of the parts, and it will always be more than the sum of the parts because the parts are connected. But how does that really practically work? So if you think of geometrical systems as containers, then this is the five platonic solids mm -hmm. as nesting dolls. Wow. Wow. And if you look, you can see that there's a, the dodecahedron hits right at the center of the um, triangular facets of the wow. icosahedron. And the, 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 there is a constant. Mm -hmm. I use the golden ratio as. 0.618, less than one, because it's better for the calculations with the measuring system that I came up with. So three times the golden ratio is the relationship between the edge of the icosahedron and the edge of the dodecahedron. And then the dodecahedron has this wonderful relationship with the cube. I mean, look at that. I mean, is that a modular piece or what? <laughs> and that that's just the long axis of the uh, pentagon of the dodecahedron is the edge of the cube that fits inside there. And then the cube, there's a tetrahedron that fits inside the cube. And I do a duotet, which is two tetrahedrons that share a same center, but are going opposite directions. And it leaves this modular unit, which turns out to be one eighth 
of a half size octahedron. I mean, one quarter. Wow. I, when I, you know, it's just constantly you're finding when you start building models, because that's mm -hmm. what Fuller said. Mm -hmm. Don't take his word for it, build the models. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a way to do, uh, to mass produce the shapes. Mm -hmm. I gave a color to each one of the shapes. There are five basic shapes plus the circle. Mm -hmm. And um, when you start building them, you find out there's just all of this interchangeable changeability and you can start building i mean you know there's okay you can do like have light come in here you know there's all sorts of ways to i'm hoping that the website will be a place that will inspire people to take time to really get to know basic geometry to try to start lowering the cost of housing wow wow <laughs> look at that <laughs> wow so that's a dual test. Mm -hmm. And so we'll take this off. And you have the tetrahedron. And inside every tetrahedron is an octahedron. Wow. So each one of these has a structural constant and a numerical constant. And you can do it in any kind of arrangement. And so then what I did is made the periodic table of structural interconnectedness mm -hmm. and took the five platonic solids and showed instead of having the icosahedron as the outside, each one of them has their time as being the outside container and then all the rest of them fit inside. Wow. And it's amazing how they fit together. Wow, wow. That, was, that is fantastic. Uh, so folks, what we're going to do now is I want to show off the site that Tom has been building. It has not been released yet. It has not been released yet, but we want to give you a preview of it. So the way Tom has structured it is that he has structured it as six portals. So we're going to go through five of those portals. So one, two, three, four, and six, one by one. And we'll have Tom talk about it. Um, so let's go to the first portal. Um, we don't have to share it yet. Um, so do, do you want to, how, how do you want to do this? What, what's the best way? Do you want to just talk about the first portal or do you want to show people the portal? Okay. Um, well, the first one is sort of the introduction to the new tools ideas. Mm -hmm. And so it's really the second portal stripped down sure. and just, give you the idea so you sort of get used to the idea and then in the second portal i go into much more detail wonderful let's start with the first portal because there are many people many of us who are just learning about uh, bucky and there are many people who will be watching this youtube video who may not be familiar with it so let's start with the first portal uh so shall we go ahead shall i ask yeah go you? to the if you go to the first portal and then you know it has these um, four different areas that you can go. Oh, well, go to the first portal. It's introduction, go to introduction. And then you see at the top, there's introduction, how to measure tool application and periodic table. So in the introduction, if you go to the introduction, these, the, there are the five platonic solids. And then beneath them is what I call the skeletons mm -hmm. of them that is connecting the center to the outside corners. Now, the ancient Greeks said that the five platonic solids were the most fundamental because of their outside appearance, that they all had one shape, that their edges were all equal, mm -hmm. and that their corners were made by the same combinations of shapes. Mm -hmm. For me, what is fundamental is how is the center connected to the outside limit. And so I have spent my career trying to come up with easy ways in which to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. So the skeleton is sort of like the first step 
for all of the rest of the ways that you can modularly divide the volume inside the fundamental structures. And then the one at the bottom is the one that I just showed you is mm -hmm. how they can be like a nesting. Wonderful. And then, you know, underneath it is the 20 systems that I talk about mm -hmm. as being most fundamental. Mm -hmm. And there's several of them that, you know, nobody has ever seen before. If you see on the second row on the right, there's something I call the mother mod, mm -hmm. which is this one right here which is the volume difference between the octahedron and the vector equilibrium. So what we can do is if we can stop sharing for a moment. Well, maybe yeah. I should just keep no, going. No, no, that's fine, this is fine. We can move very easily between them because I think people will understand it better. Go ahead. This is a mother mod. Mm -hmm. It's the volume difference between the uh, vector equilibrium and the octahedron inside. and they're really wonderful for, imagine, you know, I have several um, designs of, you know, windows here, mm -hmm. and you have a surface where, and it makes this very simple. I mean, it's just a triangle, triangle, and the six 45-degree uh, mm -hmm. triangles. And then what's interesting about them is that they divide in all sorts of different ways. That in both the all space filling, mm -hmm. which I call the sphere family, mm -hmm. and the bubble family, which is the bifold symmetries that form like eggshells. But you can see that there is the octahedron that's inside of it. And then that same kind of uh, this system here. Yes. And then they divide, there's a hexagon inside, or these are the um, couplers. Mm -hmm. And this makes another wonderful modular piece. This one is the truncated rhombic dodecahedron, which makes another and so, you know, that's what I've been doing is taking all of the, here is the mm -hmm. octahedron with the icosahedron inside it, wow. and then a dodecahedron inside it. And Fuller called these the S modules. Mm -hmm. And so you can really see how they work. And everything fits together. Everything is interconnected to everything else. That's what synergy is. It's this communication network that exists between the parts, the integral parts, the parts essential for the completion of the whole. And so that's what I've done is try to catalog the numeric and structural constants that define these communication networks. Wow, wow, this is amazing, this is amazing. All right, shall we continue with uh, the portal? I think you've given a good overview of portal one. Um, I mean, one of the things I want to say is that the term that you used on your website, natural modular, is my favorite term. For I was amazed that, that it hadn't been taken. Yes, yes. Because the website will be naturalmodular.com. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. And, okay. you know, for search engine. Yes. I mean, they would see that's yes. the perfect name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And what natural modular is, is all of these kind of modular ideas that grow out of, I call my geometry, new tools geometry. Gentry mm -hmm. Farley, mm -hmm. who I collaborated with, came up with that mm -hmm. name. And I think new tools really describes it because it's a new set of tools. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the website and look at it, you will get a new set of tools so you can go do it on your own. Mm -hmm. You don't have to listen to anything I yeah. say. And I, I like the name natural modular a little better because mm -hmm. it describes what it is so beautifully. You know, it's so simple. It's natural modular because modular, people know what it is. But natural modular, now what is natural modular? And then you show them all of this and it just says, aha, 
that's what it is. Wonderful, wonderful. So shall we go back to sharing uh, the uh, screen? Um, do you want to say anything more about the first portal? Well, I mean, there's just a huge amount of material. Absolutely. I came up with my own measuring system mm -hmm. that is based on Fuller's theory of the closest packing of spheres. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you poor Becky. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. She's very, very good at this. And she's having a great time doing this. So please go ahead. Because there's several theories of yes. closest packing. Mm -hmm. But it's the ability of spheres of the same size to pack together in the most effective minimum arrangement. And I think the design in nature always gravitates towards this idea of most effective minimum. Most effective means this connection between choice and usefulness that you see in nature. You see all sorts of choices, but every one of them is very useful. Mm -hmm. And then the minimum state is most economical in use of materials and space, least effort to realize and replicate, most accommodating to change, and the measuring system connects the individual event to the big total scheme of things. So Fuller, I mean, that is just, <laughs> what I say is if you wanna think like nature, think like a sphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what Fuller asked is, what is the, let's see if I can get these out of here. What is the minimum amount of spheres mm -hmm. to go around the center sphere? And it's 12. I can't seem to get them out of it right at the moment. But on the website, it there's 12 all, all, all around. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that gives you a continuous um, layer. Mm -hmm. And it sets up a vector equilibrium mm -hmm. with eight triangles and six squares. And so then he said that there's three layers of the initial growth. So that gives you six radiuses of these uh, ping pong balls. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a measuring system that uses the radius, what I call the you-me ball. Fuller mm -hmm. said it was the me ball. Mm -hmm. I say, let's do the you-me <laughs> so that we become a local observer. Yes. And our center of that original ping pong ball is the center of everything that we are relative to. Wow. So the two, when in 2000, I think it was, the International Federation of Table Tennis changed the radius from 1.9 centimeters to two centimeters mm -hmm. for the radius of a professional mm -hmm. tournament play ping pong mm -hmm. ball. And this light came on. Well, that's such a round number. Why don't I do a measuring system that's based on that number? So I called it the BB, mm -hmm. the belly button mm -hmm. measurement, mm -hmm. just like our navel is mm -hmm. our cutoff from all the genetics that came before. The belly button number is a cutoff from all measurement of structure before. And we start new where you and I are relative to what everything else is. And then there's four numbers mm -hmm. that I've come up with square root of two, the square root of three, the golden ratio in the square root of 3.618, the golden mm -hmm. ratio, yep. are the four numbers, and then six shapes, the circle, the triangle, the square, the pentagon, and the two diamonds, the one that I call the sphere diamond, and one that's the bubble diamond. And <clears throat> just from that, with a, the belly button measuring system, relatively, you know, multiples of these, every number of all of these are relative to those. Well, wow. just and, that. And folks on the website, Tom has spelled everything out. Tom, when is the website going to be released? I think? hope, well, it might be sooner than, because I've been getting positive feedback from it. And it's just that I haven't checked my calculations with everything and, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that I haven't, you know, grammatical errors and those kinds of things. And then the, the, the practical applications is still unfinished. Mm -hmm. But I think that I could release it with that not, you know, being a work in I progress. I strongly recommend it <laughs> uh, because you will get feedback to fix whatever little things that are left. It's much better 
to well, get maybe it out it'll there. be sooner than later. Yes, I, I I hope so. I hope so. Wonderful. Um, so shall we? How would you like to proceed now? Well, let's go to the. Um, Thank you, Becky, for for doing all of this. Really appreciate. It. Why don't we go to the periodic table of structural interconnectedness? Uh, what what section? If, if that's in the um, uh, uh, portal one, right? No, that's portal one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, portal four. Well, maybe we should go through the mapping. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, mapping is which which portal? The third one. Third one. Okay, go go for it. Okay, so people are seeing it. Because the problem that people have is that they don't think inside, mm -hmm. you know, that, and they don't think in whole systems. Mm -hmm. That's what Fuller really, I just was ever indebted to Fuller because he taught me, he trained me to always think, okay, how is this part connected to the whole thing? And if you're not connecting it to the whole thing, then you're not going to be successful. And so these are, this is the work of Fabiana Schwabe mm -hmm. of being able to take the um, closest packing of spheres. The, there's two basic job descriptions, mm -hmm. the all space filling and the fivefold symmetries. Mm -hmm. And I call them the sphere family and the bubble family, just mm -hmm. to make it easier. Mm -hmm. And the, 13 of 12 around the one center, you take that ball out and it's just miraculously, they closest pack into an icosahedron. It's just, you know, with just one action. And those are the two principal systems to describe these, all of this information of that it's basically how the first egg got its idea that the all space filling is the egg yolk and the egg white mm -hmm. and the fivefold symmetries are the egg shell and so when you like for example this is the icosi dodeca give me give us just a second yes but it has a structural memory mm -hmm. of turning into the dodecahedron just by flipping them, by having a modular piece. <laughs> but then again, it has a structural memory of being an icosahedron. <laughs> wow. Or maybe a buckyball. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and so everything is connected to everything else. That is the one thing you have to always remember in this whole system's thinking of how does this part connect to the whole? And so once you start working with it, you start recognizing numbers mm -hmm. and you start seeing these patterns and it really, it, you instead of trial and error, it becomes trail and error. Wow, wow. This is so, <laughs> this is so mind blowing, I'm amazing, amazing. All right, wonderful. So what's what would you like to go to next? Well, there's just so much material. Yes. I just don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, this is a fantastic introduction. Well, let's um, go a little deeper into the mapping. Sure. Just choose something, one of those headers. Um, you, you see the, oh, which one would you like uh, to choose? Can you read it out, uh, Becky? 95 directions, directions V, E, Five platonic solids. Well, let's do the fractal one first. That was the very my very first attempt at this first burst of order. Mm -hmm. And um, I found this very weird pattern um, going down lower. You'll see there are, there are those three images. Those are the directions out. I think it's 147. I'm not, I can't remember exactly. But it, do you see it without any kind of structure around it? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And even when you put the outside, it doesn't really, but when you connect them all, you see that it's just a simple fractal pattern. Mm -hmm. And that the, the 
distances from the center out to each one of those fractal points is this division between the square root of three and the square root of two. It starts with the square root of three and three quarters, then the square root of three, uh, two and 11 sixteenths, and then the square root of two and an eighth, the square root of two and a fourth, down to eventually to the square root of two. And I was just amazed. And so that encouraged me to explore further and try to come up with a simpler system that, so I came up with 50 directions for the sphere family and 62 directions for the okay. bubble family. Wow. Um, shall we look at the periodic table? Yes. Can we uh, go back to the portals and I think it's the other portal. That's in portal four, right? The yes. So here you, well, let's go to, um, the first one is the skeletons, which we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. And the next one is the nesting, which we've already talked about. So let's go to the periodic table itself. Now I use a periodic table because it, I needed a metaphor and it seemed like a pretty apt it metaphor. Mm -hmm. And so, as you can see, each one of them has, I think you're gonna have to scroll down to see, uh, each one of them has their place in the sun of being the outside container. So the first one is the icosahedron that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And then the dodecahedron has its time. And then the uh, cube, tetrahedron, and octahedron. And then what I do is go through each one of those and break down each one of them, the modular pieces and how you build the piece. What are the dimensions of each piece? Because I've already, in the earlier ones, showed you how to mass produce the shapes. And so then if you see a color, then you know that there's a certain relative relationship to each other. So I found that the, let's go to the triangle. I mean, the uh, tetrahedron as the outside container, because it's just. Could she click on it? Yeah, go, go up to, go back up to the top and go back to. Now, can you see tetrahedron is the outside? This will give you an idea of there was a lot of work that went into mm -hmm. to this. And I would build it and then have to photograph it. And I'm not good at any of this, but I just had to learn, wow. you know, because there was nobody else to do it for me. Wow. So you can see as you scroll down. So that's the first one, the icosahedron. So you see that there's all of the different shapes that you need to cut out to make it and keep on scrolling. And then you have the layout of what the actual modular piece looks like. And you see that all of my notations uh -huh. are, it would say like the square root of two golden ratio to the third power three BB. Uh -huh. So that there's always, in that sort of order. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is the dodecahedron. And, you know, it's just giving you all of the information so that you can build them yourselves and play around with them. And then maybe you'll be inspired to do something. Wonderful. What I want to do, I, I know I don't want to strain your voice too much. I want to do two things. One is I want to show people the practical uses of it, looking looking at your past work and future work. And then if you could show us how you have made this apartment into, you know, how you've been able to do so much with this apartment. So uh, please, uh, let's go to, uh, we're going to go now to uh, the last portal, portal six. And folks, what we are, what we are going through here on Tom's website is probably not more than 7% or 10, less than 10%, okay? There is 
tremendous amount of depth there, tremendous amount of things there. So uh, let's go ahead and- um, Hit my yes. past. Click on my past. So this was just, you know, I didn't take a lot of photographs of my work as well. You know, it, I just was, you know, I should have. Um, and this is just examples of things that I built over the years to give you an idea of, you know, what I've been trying to do. And mm -hmm. it's this idea that I mentioned earlier of using these strong geometrical systems but then trying to put these artsy fartsy mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. things around that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no clients uh, didn't, uh, That's except I, I did a stained glass window. Oh, there was wow. a woman uh, collected uh, Persian rugs and mm -hmm. she wanted a stained glass window then. Mm -hmm. So then here is the um, modular idea that I came up with when I, when Hurricane Andrew, mm -hmm. And this, these four closets with this sort of dome-like thing. And so then if you keep scrolling down in Florianopolis, I built the house utilizing these ideas just to see if it could be done. And then I realized that it needed to be bigger and I made all sorts of mistakes. I, I said, oh, we have a beautiful view of the ocean. So why not make a roof garden? You put a cement roof in a tropical climate, you're going to have an oven inside. <laughs> so, and we live near a quarry mm -hmm. and there was these explosions happen all the time. So everything cracked. And so there was a constant leakage. Fabiano eventually put a roof on the, the house. Wonderful. Uh, folks, as we see this, if there are any questions you have for Tom, this is the time to keep putting them in the chat. Uh, Becky is taking all the questions in. You can, you know, think of your questions at your leisure and put it in the chat, and we will deal with as many of the questions as, as we can. Okay, we're not going into a QA right now, but I just want to give you advance notice so you can go ahead and put your questions in the chat. All right. Um, so can we look at the second one, which is the future, or do you want to see more of these? Well, uh, can you uh, can you move the chat window? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, there's some other examples of, of the modularity that we were able to build down in mm -hmm. Florianopolis. That we did a carport mm -hmm. to try to come up with a way of using. Um, go to scroll a little further down. Those are some of the furniture that I built. Those were okay. Now this fuller came up with the A and B modules mm -hmm. to uh, divide up the volume inside the all space filling family. And there's a quarter tetrahedron that is like one of the most fundamental, it is the strongest shape. So you can have a really long span. So Fabiano and I came up with this carport. If you keep scrolling down a little bit further, the, we wanted to use traditional material, but the problem is that you have all of these um, rafters coming in at this one point. Uh -huh. So he came up with this ingenious seven-way sleeve uh -huh. so that you don't have to do any mitering or anything. Wow. You just stick it in there. Huh. And this is an incredibly strong, I mean, it can hold a lot of weight. And so we thought that that would be a good, you know, we wanted to inspire other people to experiment around with using fundamental geometrical systems to get some new roofs, please, <laughs> new roofs. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, so the rest of it is about the apartment. And so- uh, So let's go to the, uh, if you go to the top and go to, I think your future. Meaning your future. Yes. And it, this is the unfinished part. Mm -hmm. But you can see, like, for example, here is the combination of many systems inside the queue. Mm -hmm. And the tetrahedron and the coupler, the below you can see how the, the duotet and the tri-coupler, and they all fit together. So then you can, I came up with this um, 
building that has these light wells that are inside that little blue thing. If you you look there, you can see that there's a little, you can see that what is on the inside of it and those windows are there. So it the light strikes there. And so each one of those little blue, little mushroom like things mm -hmm. is a light well. Wow, wow. Besides what you can do with the windows. And these are all hexagonal on the floor plan. And if you go down further, you can see how the hexagon is really so practical. And so one of the problems with staircases is they take up a lot of space. Fabiano came up with a way in which to put the staircase in the middle between three hexagons. Wow. And it doesn't use up any of the uh, living space. Wow. And then he also came up with, if you scroll down a little bit further, how you can divide up the functions of a bathroom into three, the shower, the toilet, and the um, sink. So three people can use it at the same time. Wow. And all it is is just dividing up a hexagon. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. And that's the hexapod that I talked about earlier. And what that is, is that whatever is the ceiling height, the edge is going to be multiplied by the square root of two. Uh -huh. So a traditional three meters, I only work in metric. Uh -huh. Get rid of inches and feet. It is <laughs> so hard to work with. <laughs> metric is so uh -huh. much easier. Um, so whatever the three meters, and then, so that's four point, two, four meters, uh -huh. I think. And so that gives you a modular wall. Uh -huh. And then you figure out what is going to be your modular post that connects these together. And then you can put windows, doors, have a, you know, shading, you know, whatever. And it all can be built in a factory. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Um, so let's see how we are doing on time. So we've got about, uh, we've about uh, one hour into this. So would you like to show us uh, the apartment? Uh, sure. We'll go. It is going to be a little bit complicated. We'll have to work with the camera and stuff. The, but, what are we going to do about this light? Um, what we can do is that, um, you know what? Is it possible to just turn it as we... Why don't you move it back? Because okay. what I'm going to do is show the... This, um, this part, right? Yeah. The, okay. the Wonderful. I call it a half bedroom. No, move it all the way back. That's good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Here, if you could take that. Uh, Joe, can you confirm in chat that you can hear the sound if if you find on the apartment? No, oh, right in. I'm sorry. All right, folks. So, um, yeah, go ahead. This is my work table. Mm -hmm. And I designed it so that it can accommodate a single futon. Mm -hmm. And it's stored underneath here. You can see that there's like this little yes. platform over here, mm -hmm. which my wife called the solarium. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like to sit there and look out the window. So underneath there is a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. The whole thing about is you use every square centimeter, mm -hmm. that there's nothing to be wasted. And so the futon can go on here, and then this closes off. Wow. Oh, is this? And none of these block the lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. 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 Oh. Wow. Just recently, I had five people sleeping there. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. They have a bed underneath the mm -hmm. bed in there. Mm -hmm. This one, and then we had a, mm -hmm. 
uh, inflatable. But the, this whole idea of using like this door right here. So this is to the mic. Like this door. You know, you just figure out a way in which to, because I've been using all of these angles mm -hmm. with everything else that I'm doing, then you can use this space for all of the things that, you know, use every square centimeter. Yes. Wonderful. And this was back when computers were big and TVs were big. Mm -hmm. So this goes back, you know, for those big, huge console TVs and which doesn't really quite work anymore. And then there's a pull out. Let's see, you can't go any further, right? Oh, let's see. And move this. Uh, I might also. Oh, you can't go in here? Uh, let me see. Um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do it just a second. Give me a second. I want to get the mic for you. Okay, so we'll do it one by one. The, the mic is the mic? no, the mic is quite sensitive, so we can just leave it here, and it'll keep picking up stuff. I'll just put it oriented the right way. Now you have to figure out the this one. So yeah, if you could carry, I'm going to move this forward a little bit. Okay. Uh, can you hear, uh, hear us, Becky? Yeah. Okay. This, I'm on the forefront of this training technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used the uh, rhombic dodecahedron mm -hmm. as the basis. And you can see that it doesn't block anything using the sink. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in London, I saw they had cabinets where you could wash the dishes and put them directly into the but it was kind of clumsy and, you know, so this, they just drain right down here. And the, <laughs> the angle of inclination is such, you, you can build out of wood mm -hmm. and the water never sits anywhere. Wow. And it doesn't sit on the counter. So it frees up all the counter space because this is a tiny kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so I'm then this is for all the big pots and pans. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do washing dishes in any order. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, it has been very handy. Wow. And this is 20 years that wow. it's still there. Wonderful, wonderful. And then this is like the great um, wasted space mm -hmm. in New York apartments is mm -hmm. the space above the door to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So I developed the attic space. Mm -hmm. So you get access on this side and then access from the bedroom in here. Okay. So mm -hmm. that you have all of this space for mm -hmm. all of this stuff that you need to store. Wow. Wow. And it doesn't interfere at all. Wow. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right, let's go back. And now we'll go to questions from the audience. Just give us a couple of seconds here to come back to the setup here. Wait, sure. Just a second. All right, Becky, you're a lifesaver. I don't know how we could have done this without you. You've been so accommodating. I mean, you know, I've been sort of like erratic all over the place, and you have. Like, <laughs> it's 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 Becky. You know, she's she's doing she's she has the hardest job here. You know, I'm just having. So I'm just we move the talking. light closer. Ah uh, yes. Ah, uh, it. Can you help? Perfect. Okay. Very good. 
All right. So folks, now we are going to um, go to your questions. Um, what Becky is going to do, Becky is first setting up the camera. And then what Becky is going to do is she's going to uh, pick the questions and she will pose them one by one. She might paraphrase your questions. Uh, keep the questions coming. We'll try to do um, a few questions. And once we're done with questions and uh, Tom will answer them and then um, would love to hear what all of all of you guys uh, think. Uh, I mean, I am just thrilled uh, with this. And please know that this is just an appetizer, okay? The main course will come when the website is published. So wait, wait for it. Um, so Becky, whenever you have a question that you're ready, you can just uh, raise your uh, thumb and then we can go to any question that you want. Well, I just want to say CJ mm -hmm. was such a seminal person in my life and getting me started. Mm -hmm. I went to Oswego for one of the SNCC meetings and I made my first presentation. When was this? I think it was 2005 wow. or 2006, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous it could be, uh, you know, I was really kind of fumbling around. And Joe Clinton and CJ both took me aside and said, keep going. You've gone to something. You're, you know, it meant the world to me. And over the years, CJ was always, what are you doing now? What's the latest? You know, and it, his mind was so open. I just, I'm so glad that you're doing this. No, I'm, you know, it's, um, I mean, you know, CJ was such a gentle and generous soul. And, Perfect way to describe him. And I don't even know like even one tenth of the number of people whom he has touched in his life and made a very significant difference. And he just did that as a matter of course. Uh, so I, I am just delighted that you, you chose to do this because... Uh, you know, CJ specifically said, you know, he, you have to talk to him, but go to him, you know, he said, go to him because that's the best way to do this. You can't do this just in a Zoom window, you know? So, uh, yes, Becky, you have questions? Yes. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you for letting us come into your home and seeing all this. My pleasure. So we have a few questions. What are some of the obstacles when it comes to getting your ideas adopted related to affordable and efficient housing? There's a lot. Principally, people have very closed minds about any kind of innovation. And I have found that there's just no interest. I mean, I came up with a way to mass produce a Pentagon, exactly. And I thought people would be very excited about that. <laughs> and throughout the whole aspect of it, I think what it needs is a generational change. There needs to be people coming together that say, okay, what's working, what's now is not working. We need to try something different. Let's talk to each other. Let's work together. Let's find out something that works and start building from that. And I think that, that there's a lot of things in the way of that happening. Wonderful. Next question. Are you aware of anyone applying these ideas to temp? outdoor camping for affordable permanent housing? You know, I Google like every six months and I see some things that there was some people in Holland, I think, that had some interesting ideas. And, but then I never saw anything else about them. And, you know, there's been some tent like things that have been made that are very beautiful, but you know, what's the cost mm -hmm. of that? And 
I haven't really been able to see anybody that has like, oh, I want to contact that person and find out mm -hmm. what they're doing. How did they get this far? Well, hopefully when you get the website out, there will be ma many more such people. Over and my, my, you can contact me now at naturalmodular at gmail.com. And after talking with you, I will get the website published this month. Wonderful, wonderful. And when you do, please let me know and I will go ahead and send this out to everybody who is watching this. I'll put it on the, you know, on the YouTube channel. So we'll have people contacting you. Um, so naturalmodular at gmail.com. And um, yeah, Becky, if you at some point, if you could put it in the chat. Modular, M-O-D-U-L-A-R. No. Yeah, naturalmodular, yes, okay. at gmail.com. Wonderful. Next question. Do you have any others? Okay. Um, so this is this is just amazing. This is just amazing. You know, I... Um, so firstly, I think it's going to be a major step when you publish the website, okay? And I'm not saying this lightly. I've gone through your website and you have actually made it easy for people to not just understand, but also use these ideas. You've gone through, yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly a labor of love and it is clearly a labor of many many decades it's like a like the result of all of that and it is very clear very simple very easy to to approach uh you have to do a lot of work of course you have to grasp these things because or mostly you have to unlearn a lot of things. And uh, that's the perfect answer to the person that the question is there's a whole lot to unlearn. Yes. So, um, so folks, uh, any, any more questions? If there is no more questions, then I'm going to invite people to talk about what they got, what they learned. So uh, last chance for questions, I'll wait for 30 seconds and then we're going to, we'd love to hear from people what uh, what they said. Is, Becky, are there any questions? Just, uh, just a lot of compliments. Lots of compliments. Okay, so now what I would like to do is I would like to turn the sound on so people can, so we can hear what other people are saying. raise your hand in Zoom if you would like to tell us what you thought of our visit, you know, Becky's and my visit here to Tom, and what, what you have to say about everything that you heard today. So go ahead and type an exclamation mark. Uh, give us a couple of seconds to uh, set it up so that we can hear, hear you and see you. Um, so we'll just hear what, what people have to say. Folks, remember the next ones uh, that we have coming up is going to be on January 8th. We are going to have Stroopy at 1 p.m. Eastern time talking about spherical thinking and the way of the sphere, his part two. And at 9 p.m. Eastern time next Sunday, we are going to have Daniel Ari Friedman talk about William Blake and Bucky Fuller, the parallels in their lives, ideas, um, and comprehensivity. That's, uh, that's what is coming up. All right, so we're going to now, <clears throat> can you turn one of the, whichever one, Can you hear us? Testing. Couldn't hear you there for a moment. We were, were, were. There you go. I think. 
Okay, so you'll have to turn one of the uh, cam one of the laptops so we can see who is speaking, and then hear. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, that's video of where the volume is. So I'll I'll use the volume here. Just a second. Sorry about that. Folks, wait for a minute. Okay, I'm going to mute. Um, yes. All right. Let me unmute people. Again. Okay, we've got many, many people lined up. So let, I'm going to start with, uh, it, can you, uh, let's start with uh, Richard. Richard, go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, Tom. That, that was excellent. And I'd love people when they're playing with uh, the models the way you do and, and such complexity in it. That I actually put in a question and I'm not sure why it didn't come up. Go but ahead, my, uh, Richard, ask, ask the question. My question had to do with your familiarity with the formula that, that Bucky talked about to try and determine the number of relationships in relation to the number of entities or nodes. Oh, so it's n, n squared minus n uh, divided by two. Uh, I really tried to grasp that and I didn't have much luck. Probably. Well, it was it was significant to me because just in the basic understanding of a the tetrahedron, we know that there's six interrelationships. We can count them. Um, and actually, if you use the two finger kind of idea that Stroopy talked to us about and what you were talking about in terms of that middle, uh, you don't have to do divide by two. You get n squared minus n uh, and it'll give you. Uh, 12 instead of six uh, numbers. So like it's for a tetrahedron, it's four times four is 16 minus four is 12 divided by two is, is, is six. So that's easy to confirm uh, the formula with, with the actual observation. When you get to a pentagon or an octagon, uh, octahedron or any number of ends, it becomes very difficult to to uh, count all the interrelationships, but the formula will tell you the minimum number of interrelationships between x number of ends. And it's fascinating in the social circumstances because it gives you an idea of how many relationships you're juggling on any given moment. And and if you're dealing in my business of helping people. If somebody comes with two or three problems, relationship problems, and they're consumed by them, you can show them with this relationship formula that actually out of the two that are a problem, they've probably got 102 that they're managing quite well. <laughs> and, it, and it does the kind of thing that CJ has done to you and to others. Uh, it gives you kind of hope and encouragement to keep on going because you're really not as bad as you think you are because you've got two things not working all that well. So uh, anyway, that's I'm fascinated with that formula and I use it in a social tensegrity sense uh, to strengthen the importance of the intercommunication rather than, than just the entities or the nodes. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard. And Richard will be talking about his idea, this idea of social tensegrity on, I think, March 26th. So don't miss that. Next up is going to be uh, Brian. Brian, go ahead. Brian and Penny. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was the one who posted about tents. I've been interested in flexible building materials for years. And this, uh, you know, my idea was related to materials. Yours is related to structure. I think putting the two ideas together would be great. I'm all for that. Wonderful. Uh, Brian, I'm going to, uh, you know, you can write to um, naturalmodular at gmail.com. I'm sure Tom would love to hear from you. Oh, Thank you. you. That came in from Vasuhiko. Yes. That was the most amazing presentation. His work will be appreciated in Japan. Wonderful. Yasuhiko, is, is he still around? 
Uh, yes. He's, um, Yasuiko, would you like to uh, speak? Oh, he's on mute. Oh, he's on mute. Okay, that's fine. Uh, go ahead, Yasuiko. Tom would love to hear from you. Go ahead. Funny story is that one of the reasons why I left Japan and live in the United States is because of the space that I can get in this country, <laughs> as opposed to Japan. You know, uh, growing up in small house and apartments, but now looking at your apartment, the Japanese people will appreciate this whole thing. So uh, after you put up the, your website, you know, I will do my best to connect you with some Japanese people who can help you, you know, spread your amazing technology in Japan. Well, thank you very much. I, <laughs> I, the aesthetic of Japan is very much my aesthetic as well. You know, that kind of yes. um, connection to the natural world. Yes. And Japanese Shinrin have... Yoku. Eh? Shinrin Yoku. Yes, Shinrin Yoku, yes. I do that every day. Yeah. On my bike around Central Park. And Japanese had this uh, architecture, architecture technology using wood for, for well over 1,500 years. And we have the oldest wooden structure, uh, Shosoin, which is still the standing after 1200 years. And so, you know, we do have that uh, sense of technology with architecture. So- Power. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, I uh, eagerly await for your website. And then as soon as it is up, I will uh, speak to some Japanese people. That may be really good, a great contribution to Japan. Thank you, Yasuiko. Thank you very much. I will let My you pleasure. Know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yasuiko. I'll let you know as soon as the website is up. Uh, let's see. Next up is Joe. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, this is a fantastic presentation. Um, and I'm really excited because some of Tom's ideas I've actually uh, read a little bit out of Cornell uh, in the real estate management group. Uh, is actually done some work with how to efficiently use space within a uh, within a um, an apartment complex, and basically the way they are they are actually making everything mobile. So it's very much like the way Thomas set up his house. It's just uh, automated now, and it has a control pad and everything. So there's, you know, your ideas are actually in, are coming to fruition uh, and, and some people are working on them. So you should, I, I will definitely put those companies in the chat. Um, and it's really interesting to see that people are starting to think this way, how to think about using space more efficiently. Um, and so this is, and by giving us the actual geometry and the math behind it helps us, uh, help me personally uh, understand exactly what they're doing. Uh, so I appreciate this uh, tremendously, and I know that CJ had, as C uh, Shri, uh, um, had mentioned, uh, held you in such high regard. So thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for those comments. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Next up is going to be Evanique, followed by Stroopy. Evanique. Oh, Evanique, uh, just a second. Hold on. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for this presentation. And thank you so much for showing us your lovely apartment. I, I just love the, the ideas and design, you know, making such a complex space so livable and to have to be able to have up to five people sleep in, in, in a New York apartment in general, it's just nothing short of, you know, genius. So Thank you for that. I think that the main thing that I got from this presentation and from you is that everything is connected to everything else. And I love that idea. And you can see it in your apartment. Um, I think you can also see it in the work that you're doing with lower income housing. Like we are all connected when we see um, unhoused people on the street and, you know, just, you know, wanting to do something, but not knowing what. And you coming up with solutions is amazing. And like when you shared your solutions here, there were so many other people that want to work with you 
um, to solve this problem. And this is how you do it. So thank you so much for sharing your work and um, and for sharing your ideas. So thank you. I'm getting goosebumps when you were saying that. <laughs> it just, you know, that's really what I want to do is help start a conversation about how to actually lower the cost of housing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, you Evanique. Uh, next up is Strupi followed by Rupali. Strupi, go ahead. Hi, Tom, and hi to Srikant and Becky and all the rest of you. Um, thank you for giving us such, an, uh, such a nice introduction to, to your life's work. And um, there's two little questions I have. The first one has to do with the mirror that I can see you in right now, because as you had moved it earlier, the camera was able to catch more of the room in the mirror because it was more distant to it. So maybe if you were to move the, the mirror as you did before, but a little more slowly, and the camera was looking more at it, we, we might see a little more of what your uh, room looks like there. Okay, great idea. So, uh -huh. hi, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I love your background. Hi, Stroopy. Hi there. Now that's 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 a more of an idea of depth to 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 the room I think, that's awesome, Wonderful. and I love the way that you that you're rounding all your corners. It's uh, feels very very healthy. Um, well, and the other question I had had to do with the uh, I think you called it the mother mod, yeah, because I've come across that one recently in my in my play. I, I only have one version of it here right now, which is my little wallet here. Um, but the way I, I came at it is from the IBM and um, you know transforming the IBM with maintaining like the, the, the horizontal levels in their size, right? The top and bottom I, uh, triangle, if you like, and then stretching or squishing the, the vectors in between. And in this case, it, this is this beautiful kind of flattened uh, eight eyes, or you'd call it octahedron. Oh, that's amazing. And I've been using this for quite a number of things now. I, I think it's a perfect shape for, for furnitures of all kinds and stuff like that. And my question with that is, have you tried the, the other one, version of that, where rather than having the, the six vectors that connect the the top and the bottom have them shorter have them longer than the others right so it's it's an elongated eight eyes so in like the the the, the most natural version of that I, I i i'm afraid i don't have the the three additional struts here but i i use this to get there is um uh, anyways this is a a model of quantum entanglement <laughs> Um, I thought to to capture the the way that two four eyes meet in the in the nucleus of the the vector equilibrium, and I can't seem to open the knot here. Maybe now, yes. And the thing is, this is now tied together in in the center here. Um, but if I untie that, then this will be moving again for lack of triangulation. Uh, if it ever unties. That's the thing. Sometimes a knot is too good to be true. I think Lao Tzu said the, be the best knot is not a knot and cannot be undone or something like that. Uh, he knew a thing or two about synergetics. Yeah, anyways. I, I don't have the, the actual body here right now. It's in the other room. But there's a beautiful way out oh, now here. So this is you see, this is like um, two planes, one triangle on the top and one on the bot bottom. And they're connected with these longer fingers that are twice the length. And if I twist them one way or the other, we get the nesting that Bucky spoke to, right? The turbining, I think he called it. It's but, a wonderful uh, model. It is. It's so simple and so beautiful. And if you, if, if I were to get the other three straws that I don't have here right now, and I put them in between here, I would triangulate these 
quadrilaterals again, getting uh, turning this into an eight eyes, right? But it's a long one. And the beauty about these things is both of them still function identical to the IBM, meaning we can put them together just as we do in the IBM. And we can basically think of the IBM. That's, that's I think, one of the major shifts that comes with synergetics, where we actually level the IVM so that the the triangular planes are one of them is horizontal, right? Because then we get all the structural integrity and all the possibilities of these shapes. And with that, um, in this case of this one here, you know this one, it's a two frequency vector equilibrium. I think you've got the three frequencies sitting on your table there with the spheres. Um, that one, yeah. So that's one more layer than this, but what what I was going to say is that we could keep these horizontal layers just as they are and freely change the length of the vectors in between all equally in, in one layer, you know, making them double or triple in the next layer, they're squished. And then we get this beautiful model, modelability, modelability to these most essential structures to my mind i've been playing with a lot of these shapes but the one that i always return to for its balance and its usefulness and its sheer beauty is the eight eyes the octahedron because it's the for for what we need to put in it's the most that we can get out of all of them i think right if you if you have the icosa then there's already so many things we need to put together to make it yes it's a big thing but also a lot of things already, whereas the the eight eyes is only twice, you know, the 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 quantum uh, input of the the four eyes, only twelve fingers vectors, but it's four times the volume and it's bigger than the cube, right? So it's a, a more it's got four planes in it that are hexagonal and all of these useful attributes, and at the same time it appears to be about the the least applied and used shape in human history at least in our civilization's case and that i think only just that you know all your stuff it's like it's like a, a whole universe full of of insight and understanding that is so incredibly valuable and the the beauty of it is that it all goes together right it all interaccommodates and um complements one another, right? You can always keep adding, keep growing this whole uh, wonderful spherical playground of yours. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Strophy. That you, you hit it right on the, the nail on the head, you know, the this idea that everything's connected to everything else, everything accommodates. Yeah. Your ideas and my ideas are the same idea. Yeah. We just express it differently. And that's what's so beautiful about this. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be the solution to the problems in the future. Yeah, there's not going to be problems anymore because we realize that problems are an outcome of a, of a frame of mind that is problematic to begin with. And I think when we get rid of that frame of mind, then you know we, we'll see a lot of possibilities where only now we, we see only problems, you know. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Srupi. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, uh, next up is Rupali. Rupali, go ahead. Uh, Tom, thank you so much. Your apartment is very refreshing. Your designs are refreshing. You know, the, the shelves that you have with one wider side and a shorter side on the other. Uh, so many years ago, about 30 years ago, I used to practice architecture in India. And uh, we had to design staircases uh, in a very small space. And that's the design we had actually used because on the wider part, you can put your foot and the narrow part, you don't need to. And uh, we made it out of ferrocrete, which was a low cost, but yet a very sturdy material. And um, I was so delighted to see the shelf because it reminded me of of a project which I did long time ago. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, I'm really interested in learning more about your structures. Unfortunately, I joined late, so I'm going to go back to the recording and I'll probably have more questions for you later. 
I, I want to just share um, one, other, one other observation that, you know, in the, in the process of trying to standardize everything and mass produce everything, we ended up with um, boxes that look pretty much the same monotonous, um, not, uh, not conducive, like you can have the same house in North Carolina and in Massachusetts and there's nothing about it that says it's me or it's individuality or it's integrity. And with the, uh, with the hexagons and triangles, you can play so much more. Uh, I, I had designed some geodesic domes and what I found in that um, exercise was that you can play with triangles, trapeziums, hexagons, rhombuses and arrange them. You can take an opening out, you can add an opening there and just the light or the space changes. And the other part is that because of these standardized things, you have to have your rooms and um, houses with smaller, smaller, smaller compartments. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the triangles, you can open up the space and you don't need to be constrained in those small areas. It's your part, your part of a bigger space and then you can arrange the compartments the way you like it, the way you've done it and shown us so magnificently in your house. Um, I do have uh, my architecture colleagues in India and uh, they work a lot with bamboo structures there. Bamboo and, is amazing. Yeah. And so I'm going to uh, connect you to some of my friends in India who are practicing architects and are doing some of the work uh, that is similar to yours. I'm sure they would love to learn from you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, is there anybody else, uh, Becky, that I missed? No, right? Okay. Folks, uh, so Tom, thank you so much. Let me hand put this back here so I don't think about the computer. Okay, so uh, Tom, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate it so much too. You know, you have given me so much. Uh, I'm gonna publish the, the website next week. <laughs> and all these people are waiting for it, <laughs> you know, and they are, you know, because what happens is that Rupali, Ms. Rupali is a very good friend of mine. I've known her for 25 years. And um, so I was with her yesterday, you know, she just called and I was playing with spheres. And I know that she knows how to play with spheres much better than I, I do. So I went there uh, to visit her. But um, Rupali, the website, and for everybody, the website is incredibly rich. Okay, it is one of the best websites I've seen in terms of taking a complex idea and it making it accessible to you. So I'm going to put up the website. I'm going to send it to everybody who's listening here. I will also put it up in the YouTube video. Um, the YouTube video, you know, Becky quickly scroll through a whole bunch of things, but you know, the great thing about YouTube is that you can slow things down and you can actually read what is there. So you, you'll at least get some flavor of it before it, before it comes out. But, um, and thank you very much, everybody. Um, you know, I think the, the Bucky series is off to a great start with the great presentation by Stroopy yesterday and today's visit here with uh, Tom Miller. Um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.